Let's speak now to Patrick Kilduff, who is president of the University of Edinburgh's Student Association, who is giving evidence at the inquiry today. The university banned Robin Thicke's blurred lines from being played at student union events because the lyrics undermine and degrade women. Al Fisher is a transgender filmmaker and campaigned to stop Jermaine Greer from speaking at International Women's Day in Brighton a couple of years ago. And Linda Bellos was no platformed by a Cambridge student society because of her views about trans women, that they aren't the same as women who were born female. Uh, thank you all of you for talking to us. I'd really like to hear you talking to each other about the issue of freedom of speech, not about the substance of Linda Bellos's views. But So let me ask all of you to start off with, Linda, is free speech being suppressed at universities? It looks like it. I don't, I don't want to hype it, but uh, hmm. <sighs> my difficulty is that if, if what was said to me was widespread, then we've got a problem. I don't think that students should be protected, I put that in inverted commas, from ideas that they might disagree with. Uh, I think they should develop robust arguments in response. That's what we go to university for. I did, at least, as a mature student. Al? Uh, I think when we're talking about people being no platform or people not being allowed to speak, it is because of opinions that are beyond people disagreeing and it's beyond differing opinions. It's usually opinions that can be seen as very hateful and very stigmatizing towards a group of people. And that is why I think universities say that they are there to protect their students and they don't want them to be exposed to views that could harm them and the people who are in that situation or other people around them. So I think the discussion needs to be about what sort of opinions are being expressed uh, because we can differ on certain topics, but when we're speaking about people's lives, that has real consequences and ramification towards people and especially minorities and we need to be careful about what we put out there uh, and what is allowed to be said. Go ahead Linda, I can see you want to respond to that. Did you hear what Al said, Linda? Uh, no, yes I did, I did. Sorry, I didn't realise you were addressing me. Well, uh, I, I heard it, and I think about the hurt that I have experienced in these 67 years of my life in Britain. I wasn't protected. Uh, I was, uh, what I did do, I think, was res develop responses in order to cope. And I wasn't intending to speak to students in ways that would be hurtful or disrespectful of where they were or where they thought they were. I wanted to, and I still want to, explore with other human beings ideas, thoughts. I happen to think that gender is very much a man-made notion, just like race is. There's only one race, the human race, and yet there's racism because some people treat others less favourably okay. because of the colour of our skin. And we've got the mm. same stuff about gender. I would just say that, sort of bringing back to Linda's first point, it certainly looks like it. it's all about perception getting ahead of reality with this issue. I mean, the fact is almost everyone who's saying free speech is under attack at universities spends almost no time in higher education institutions. And the now former universities minister's comments were almost reprehensibly ignorant because we know free speech is alive and well at Edinburgh University Student Association. We host almost five and a half thousand events by our student societies. We host the largest arts festival in the world. And only a few events are referred to with a compliance group in the university and that's by virtue of government legislation and nothing to do with the Students' Association. Mm. Is it right that, that, that there are some speakers who won't be invited or would be no platformed because you wanted to protect a, a, a group of students? I think it's right that we take security very seriously. You know. Security? What do you security. mean? Well, because in, cer in certain instances there are risk elements to inviting certain speakers, so we have to account for that risk. And students Why, need... What, what do you think Can will I... happen? Sorry, go on, Linda. Sorry, Linda. I, I was just wondering whether the risk of me being black might, be a ri might, 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 might hurt some of them, because the, most of them are white. No, uh, would no. that be a risk? I think it, I, I think that's quite an inflammatory statement to us because I would say that the risk of secu security risk I'm talking about is the general health and safety of people attending an event, and this is why no events have been cancelled, no speakers but, have but, been dis. What I believe threat would I, I represent? Tell you don't, me. Again, I'm telling you that what I believe is that what you refer to as no platforming is, as you know your definition of no platforming, what most people would call being disinvited. You were disinvited from speaking. I've been no platform, by that definition, I've been no platformed by thousands of TV programmes across the country this morning.
but I'm not, I'm not, I don't get a platform to stand in the media and say that I was no platformed. You're currently on one of the largest news programmes in the country talking so, about how you are no platformed. As indeed you are. Yes, I know, that's my point, which is, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sort of demonising a, no, a sort of false notion of no platforming right now. And I don't... Why? I think the and reasons... in what way? I think the reasons behind why people might be disenlightened is because these views are harming a very vulnerable group in society. It's not because people don't want someone to speak there because of who they are. It's because of their views that have Ugh. severe consequences towards people. Well, and I'm sorry, sorry that you're sighing about that, but that is real. It has real Look, consequences upon the lives of people, and we need to take it seriously. My views include my experience of racism. That, that's part of my views, and my experience, my analysis of power at human construction, at the systems that are created usually by men, white men, to hierarchy, you know, to, to create a hierarchy in which some of us are given some status and some of us aren't. Those are my views. Is that dangerous to you? Is it, does it threaten you? It is dangerous when it starts advocating against my rights and I these views are a part I, of a discourse I, that advocates against not, my right. And I the campaign not, that you've aligned yourself does. I, I'm not I'm really going to get into the specifics, untrue. but it really does. I support the 2004 Gender Recognition Act. I disagree with some of the proposed changes to that act, which will have a disadvantageous impact upon those of us who remain female women. Al, can I ask you, what can you explain to our audience what harm it does you to hear the kind of views that Linda has about trans women? What specific harm I, does I, it do to you? I think the main consequence of people denying trans people their humanity and who they actually are contributes to a very deflammatory and discriminatory discourse. Uh, and we can see this when we look at suicide rates of trans people and how actually vulnerable they are in society because these views contribute to it and the reasons why trans people are often discriminated against or can't get access to services is because of discrimination, is because of stigma. And why do you believe that the best way to overcome those views which you find are offensive is to, to silence them, to I, not hear them? I wouldn't say it is to silence them. I mean, I think Linda has every platform to view to say her views so yeah. i think in this case it's not about her being silenced it's about a specific I, university I not wanting to it, invite her to speak at a specific event and that LGBT is their right because they're taking a stand against certain views that she has portrayed i i, I it's not about a, a view i'm objecting to some proposals that the government were making which will be dis disadvantageous to those of us who are women that's a matter of it's not a matter of a view. I mean, or maybe it is, but I, I, I am entitled to have a view about a law that will impact upon me, my daughter, my granddaughters, etc. Okay. I, I, that's that's. I think that's right in a free society. We take to, we don't all have to agree with each other, but we do and can and should be able to disagree with each other. Again, I think we do have a right to disagree with each other. I think that views should be challenged, but it's about doing it in a secure and accessible environment. And the, the no platforming and the sort of all those things you speak of, the people on the NUS no platform list, two or three of the organisations are prescribed terror organisations. There are numerous members of the leadership of most of the organisations on there who have been arrested for inciting violence, inciting racial hatred. And those are things we take into account when we invite speakers, like any organisation, and like you any institution. Am I, the, the am critics, I one of them? Uh, Sorry. Do you want to answer Linda's question? Pardon? I'm asking you, am yeah. I one of these people? You're not, on the NUS no, you're not on the NUS No platforming list, no. OK, uh, but in this case, I was disinvited. Disinvited, yes, yes. correct. And, I, and that's an, one institution's decision not to invite you to something, I mean, and they're entirely the NUS, entitled the NUS to do so. The NUS nationally have, six, yeah. have banned six organisations from campuses, including Muslim P Public Affairs Committee, National Action, Al Mujahiroon, and so oh. on, the BNP. Yeah. Critics of bans like that point to the fact you will all remember Nick Griffin, the leader of the BMP, mm. the then leader of the BMP, on Question Time, whose support appeared to fall away after he was able to air his views. And again, that's, uh, you know, you're pointing out a very good example of someone who was put on a stage in a BBC studio in a secure setting where the, he was allowed to air his views. Now, the fact is, is that most universities and most students associations don't have the resources to put on the security that I'm sure Broadcasting House had to put on yeah. to accommodate for Nick Griffin that night. OK. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you for you. coming on the programme. Patrick Kildoff and Al Fisher and Linda Bellos, many thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.